So in this video, we're going to talk about the installation process for this GMAC motor. So as received, the GMAC motor is going to come with the inner piece of our spline torque arm already pressed on the axle. And if you're not using disc brakes on the bike, that's great, you can leave it on place. For most people, they're going to be converting this on a bike with disc brakes, and they're going to be able to transport the disc rotor from the previous hub onto the GMAC motor, assuming it's a six-bolt ISO disc rotor like this. And in order to install the disc, you first need to remove this inner torque arm plate. So it, by by its very nature, we designed this to be a really snug spline fit. So you have to kind of get in there with a flat-headed screwdriver and just pry it off the axle, leveraging against the heads of the disc screws that are already on here. So here we'll work that spline piece off. Um, and that snug fit there is indicative of how well this arm is going to work to uh, prevent any kind of back and forth play when you're switching between regen and torque acceleration. So we lift that off here and uh, now we can actually access the bolt holes that hold the disc in place. So the motor, when it's shipped, it includes a spacer that's just kind of a placeholder for a disc. This is not supposed to stay on there. If you're putting on a disc rotor, you want to remove that piece of metal as well. The only reason it's there is so that these screws, when you have them in the holes, uh, don't seat in too deeply when there isn't a disc rotor uh, providing that extra little space. So now remove the spacer, and then on goes the disc rotor, paying attention to the direction of rotation as indicated by the rotation errors. And then we put the bolt holes back in place. Okay, so with the disc rotor installed, we now have to replace the inner torque arm piece. As expected, it's going to be a tight fit. You can usually work it on uh, just by pushing hard with your, with your hands and just try to seat that all the way down. If it's being stubborn, feel free to just tap it with a dead blow hammer um, and just to knock it on. And you want to push it down until the surface of the aluminum is flush with the end of the axle or a little bit further in. So now the Mac motor comes with this bag of hardware and the torque arm itself also has a spline pattern. So in our initial development, we actually were relying just on the bolts to link this to the inner plate, but found that those bolt heads themselves had a chance to wiggle loose and, uh, and then updated the designs so that we actually locked it in place properly um, with this uh, secondary spline. Now the torque arm has 12 different positions that it can be oriented on here. So there's notches that can align it in each of those spaces. And the correct alignment here is really crucial because in the installed GMAC motor, this cable has to come out through the dropout slot itself. You can't have the cable being squished inside or you're going to sever the sheathing on there. So if you have a motor with a dropout that angles backwards, you'd want to orient the arm about like this. If you have a vertical dropout, it would come out more or less straight down. But the optimal slot here will depend a little bit on the frame geometry, where your bottom chainstay fits uh, relative to this. So if you're not very certain about it, uh, you can install the motor on the bike and then rotate this to see which is the closest alignment point. And then that's the one that you seat it down on. So once you've identified that position, you now uh, press on the arm piece and like so and then that will sit again totally parallel and flush with the end of the axle and then there'll be either five or six inside torque heads uh, inside screws to hold that properly on place now uh, these small countersunk screws use the same t20 torx head as the disc bolt rotors itself so for this installation you are going to need a t20 torx and that's going to be standard in any uh, bicycle toolkit hardware because that is the norm for disc rotor screws. Now at this stage what we're going to do is mount that on the bike and see if I've actually got my orientation correct for the cable exit. So here now we're going to fit this in the frame and then confirm how the cable exit sits and now you can see that the torque arm really wants to be right about there in order to line up with our uh, bolt hold here. Um, but the cable exit is going to be crushed a little bit against the side of the dropout. So I actually want to rotate the torque arm one more notch this way. So let's take that off. Uh, so in, in general, you'd want to test that alignment before you put all the screws in, of course. Uh, so now I'm just going to double check if this is where I want it to be. So we drop the motor oops, into the frame. And even here, this looks like it's just about spot on. Um, and uh, yeah, and so you can see the cable exits and it has plenty of room to bend out while still inside the dropout slot there. Perfect. 
So now with the motor and the dropouts, we've already installed the axle nuts to hold it in place. Um, the axle nuts that we use here are nylock, so you're going to need a wrench in order to spin them on. And that, uh, the nylock is quite important because even with this really tight torque on here, there's still always a little bit of wiggle taking place on the axle when you switch between powerful regen and non-regen. Um, if you are going to use a washer under the nuts, it's optional, uh, make sure that you only install the washer on the outside of the dropout. Never put a washer inside the dropout or you're going to crush and sever the sheathing of this cable. So this cable needs to freely come out into the slot of the dropout itself there. So the frame clamp piece here has four different possible alignment positions. You can see that it's offset from the center point. So depending on where your uh, chainstay lines up, you can either orient it this way, you can flip it this way to shift it a little bit, and you can also position it on either side of the arm itself. So in this case, the stay bends inwards early on quite quickly, so we're going to need to install it with the arm piece itself here outside of the clamp that goes on to the stays. We orient that into the hole, and then this has two hose clamps that lock it to the frame itself. So we get this sort of loosely held in place, and now we can install our hose clamps. Um, and the kit will come with heat shrink tubing that you can slide over the hose clamp band if you want to have it stay black and avoid the risk of marring the paint. Um, now here I'll probably want to flip that in an orientation where I can freely screw it um, after the wheel's installed. And that's it. So we would tighten up this as snug as possible, get those hose clamps good and tight, and now there's no wiggle or play at all possible on the torque arm connection linking the axle to the frame of the bike. So at this point, we really want to make sure that these axle nuts are still done up as tight as you can reasonably consider safe without stripping the threads. Uh, there should be a newton meter figure for that in the installation guide. <clears throat> So obviously normally this would be laced into a rim with the tire on it and you would similarly be looking after installing the cassette free hub on this side and ensuring that your derailleur is aligned uh, but for the most part the derailleur should be a drop-in fit from the existing hub that you replaced and so that's how we can securely install this super high power motor on a bike frame without any spin-out concerns